Venus, the goddess of money, love, beauty, and friendship, kindness, and peace is moving into the sign of Aquarius for the first time in our lives, joining with Pluto. She moves into Aquarius on February the 16th and leaves on March the 11th. And along the way, she makes some major aspects to planets in the sky, including the North Node of Fate. We're going to talk about how Venus in Aquarius tends to operate, especially if you're born with a Venus in Aquarius and what it might mean for her temperament. We're going to look at some powerful implications for the world and how this Venus and Aquarius super rare transit because of the presence of Pluto may play out based on your sun, moon, and rising sign. So stay tuned for the details for you and the world. But before we get started. Welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Lori Lothian. I am using the Western Tropical Zodiac and whole sign houses. And if this kind of stuff interests you, minor asteroids. And every one of my videos, I bring in one or two minor asteroids when they're needed to give us the devil is in the details. So I suggest you listen for your rising sign first. That's going to be most accurate. By the way, this is Western Tropical Zodiac. Then you can listen for your sun to do with career and purpose. And you can listen to your moon to do with home and safety and your body, okay? And if you don't know how to cast your chart in whole science houses, which is what we delineate by here on YouTube land, then you can look at my free tutorial vi video down below and just click on that, go download that free tutorial on how to cast your chart in whole sign houses. This will also allow you to cast your chart in order to find your rising sign. Okay, let's talk Venus. Let's talk this sky. I'm pretty excited because I'm an Aquarius rising. So when Venus is here with Pluto for the first time in my life, I am super jazzed, super, super jazzed. But let's talk a little bit about what Venus is like in Aquarius before we talk about what she's going to do in Aquarius. Like Aquarius is a sign that it's about air and air is about relating, relatingness, right? Gemini, one within oneself, you know, your Jekyll Hyde, Libra, one on one with another, and Aquarius, one on many. And often you'll see that people born with Venus in Aquarius are social butterflies of the nature of what I would call a connector. If you listen, if you ever read The Tipping Point, that famous book a few years ago, there are different types of people, the salespeople, the mavens, information mavens, and the connectors. The connectors are people who literally connect in different people. They're the ones that are the master networkers or introduce you to other people. And indeed, in the book itself, he kind of describes it like, um, these are the people who we rely on, I'm kind of reading my notes, whom we rely on uh, more heavily than we realize to connect us to others and bring people together. They're like, oh, I know somebody you should meet, you know? And these connectors um, or these like Venus Aquarius people also love eclectic groups of friends. If you are born with this, you know what I mean. You don't just want to be friends with the rich and famous. You're down, you're down to go to the soup kitchen and make best friends with the guy, you know, on his down and out or the girl in her down and out mode. Um, you'll find that your humanitarian energy is very active if you're born with a Venus and Aquarius. You're trying to, through the acts of kindness and friendliness and goodwill and love and uniting people, because Venus unites where Mars separates, bring people together. So we can look at Venus and Aquarius in a way of trying to connect people, to bring people together, to have a humanitarian bent, to have an eclectic range of social uh, engagements and people. Okay, that's the vibe. And sometimes because it is a cerebral energy more so, it's, it's well, it's not cerebral per se, but it's air, so it's ideas, but it's also ruled by Saturn. And you'll find that Venus and Aquarius is serious about love, realistic about love, sober-minded about love. She's not the one to fly off the handle and possessive and jealousy rages, not at all. You'll never see her do that. She's so chill, right? She's like, well, if you don't love me, that's fine. I'm wishing you well and, you know, go your way. Um, she'll work it out in her mind later on how she feels about the end of a relationship. Now, I would say to you, this Venus and Aquarius could be good for the world because Aquarius rules culture and society. But with Pluto there, we're seeing something very different than we've seen in our lifetimes. We'd have to go back to the 1800s when Pluto was in Aqu uh, Aquarius and Venus was trundling along, like I think 1879, add 20 years. And that's not here now. So we, I don't want to do history of this. I want you to say, oh, wow. The goddess of love, money, goodness, kindness, peace, and friendliness, the one who unites and brings together is with Pluto, power, domination, secrets, revealing, intensity for the first time in my lifetime. The most important thing she's going to do, in my humble opinion, is she's going to conjunct 
the a planet um, Mars on February 22nd after chasing after him and him after her for quite a long time. Now they did come together in Aquarius in 2024. This this conjunction of I mean 2022. This in March of 22. This conjunction of the of the cosmic lovers happened in Aquarius at zero degrees. We're going to go through some of the history of the cycle of the two coming together in Aquarius. So you can look back over your life and try to relate it to your whole sign Aquarius house and how Venus coming through this part of the sky has made changes in your whole sign house. I hope my microphone is on. It is, but I just had one of those moments. I'm going to double check. Uh, okay. Give me a sec and we'll get back to the recording. Now, in his most amazing book, The Archetypal Universe, my friend and teacher, Ren Butler, will describe Venus Pluto as thus. I'm about to read it to you. Now, I want you to understand, this is like um, when a choir director has a pitch pipe. That sun is really driving me nuts. Give me a minute. Sorry, guys. <laughs> er. Of course, just when you need a, a blind to go down, it won't. Give me a sec. So what he does say about Venus and Pluto when they're talking to each other um, is interesting. I'm going to read this to you because it's an amazing book. Um, it's in my description box, The Archetypal Universe by Ren Butler. And I'm recording this on February the 7th, ahead of the curve for my Patreon community who gets everything early access ad-free. If you're new to my channel and you haven't hit that like button or tried me out or subscribed, give me a try. And to all my regulars, welcome back. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to read a bit to you here. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing these beautiful earrings by my friend, uh, Malena Devi. And sometimes you guys know that I've shared these earrings before, especially on Venus videos. Aren't they gorgeous? I mean, I know the light of the sun is a little off, but uh, Goddess Treasures uh, is her is her business brand. And she does this by hand. They're one of a kind. And if you're interested in that kind of really cool jewelry by an amazing creative female, uh, support women. Women supporting women is one of my things. Um, then please, please, please go check the link in my description box. This is just sharing for a friend. I am not in any way receiving a compensation. All right. So Venus Saturn, okay. So I mean, Venus Saturn, Venus Pluto. Now don't forget Venus Pluto is really something fresh for us in Aquarius. Venus Pluto happens, you know, all the time, right? Because Pluto's going somewhere and Venus transits by him at least once a year. But this is the first time in our lives that we're going to have Venus Pluto Aquarius. But in general, the archetypal energy of Venus and Pluto is this deep and intense passions, renewing and regenerating, regenerating forces in relationship, the power of love and the drive to unite, the interplay of beauty and the beast, a tendency to obsessive attractions, that's the dark side, feelings of jealousy and possessiveness, passive aggression or manipulation, and a love of power. When I think of Venus and Pluto, I think of that old song, Addicted to Love, and I also think of Fatal Attraction. Remember that Robert Palmer song, Addicted to Love? And then remember also Fatal Attraction? To me, these are classic dark side of Venus and Pluto. Pluto can also take love to a higher place or a deeper place, a more profound intimacy can happen. And Venus Pluto is traditionally the trillionaire wealth yoga, so it can also engender wealth. Now, um, I'll give you a couple of Venus Pluto quotes, right? Because um, where there is great love, there are always miracles by Willa Cather, born with a Venus Pluto opposition. So I love that. Where there is great love, there are always miracles. And then another great quote, fair and foul are near of kin and fair needs foul, I cried. That's Yeats, the poet. Now, let's get going and talk about the details. I'm going to show you the sky in a second. But before I show you the sky and we get going on that, I apologize. I just cannot get this light right with the sun today. I want to show you, I want to talk about the dates that you saw this happen before. So Pluto is in Aquarius till 2044, right? That's a long, long, long time. So we were talking about the 1800s with Venus and Pluto, but in terms of the most important thing happening this year and this time ahead, I, to me, it's the Venus and Mars conjunction in Aquarius. Now, we had a foretaste of that back, way back in uh, March 6th of 2022. Venus was retrograding in Capricorn, and indeed in February, she co-joined with Mars in the sign of Capricorn, but then she reset the Mars narrative with the cosmic lovers coming together March the 6th, 2022, at zero degrees of Aquarius. Anyone who knows astrology knows that zero Aquarius is a hot spot in the sky, where the great conjunction of kings that's jupiter and saturn co-joined on the winter solstice of 2020 yes it was like 
intense energy. And as they came together back then, they reset us into what we call an air, an air cycle. We're in a worldly air cycle right now that's going to last a couple hundred years. And that energy is still here today. And now Venus had squatted down with Mars on March 6, 2020. And that is going to 22, they came together. And so there's this hot spot that they seeded. Now there's a star at zero degrees, by the way, it's Altair. So that star was very active and is a war star. Venus is the goddess of uniting and peace and love. And Mars is hate and conflict and war. And the two of them fused together on a star for war, Altair, the eye of the eagle, playing to win, winning, and known as a military star. So as we all know, since that conjunction in 2022, which happened in March, we saw the it starting in February, the beginning of the Ukraine-Russia war. And that is also embedding into it, unfortunately, the Israel-Gaza war. Now, when Mars, the god of war, and Venus, the goddess of peace, or love and hate, fuse again, it may indicate a change in the war cycles, especially with what was started back then, which was the Ukraine war. So we can probably see that close out, whether everybody likes the deal at the end of the day and is happy with the way it ended. Oh, well, but we're very likely to see that thing come to a final close closure in the wake of this conjunction, probably in the first uh, waxing quarter, uh, meaning that eventually Mars and Venus will come into a, a square to each other. And between the, now and then that will close out. I'm not going to do a lot of mundane astrology. I want this Venus thing to be about you and for you and your sign, but I want you to get a big picture of you. Now, the other times that Venus came into a conjunction with Mars was in night, February of 1992 in Aquarius, then in December of 1997, then in March of 2022, and here we are again. And so you realize that she's doing this as a relatively rare event. If you, if you want to know, the next time she comes together in Aquarius with Mars is 2054. But in 1992, 1997, right, and um, in 2054, we will not have Pluto in Aquarius with her. This is going to bring us into contact with something much, much bigger. When Mars joins into the fray, right? Mars will get Mars will have entered into Aquarius, just so you know, on the 13th of February. Go listen to my Mars and Aquarius video for that delineation. Then Venus follows on the 16th and they unite. Pluto is co-present. And in Ren Butler's book, Venus Pluto combined with Mars, okay, is the following a primal, a primal and passionate nature, the potential for profound romantic and sexual healing, sexual healing, ongoing offers to balance your yin and yang energies, dynamic and creative work. The possibility though, on the darker side of obsessive attractions, overlay of brutal or domineering approaches to sex and relationships, romantic and sexual power trips, deliberately coarse manners, perinatal themes, that's to do with being born, you know, prenatal and perinatal, things around your birth and contaminating the sexual experience. Okay. <laughs> Woo. All right. We'll be diving a lot more into that when that comes up. Now there are Sabian symbols involved here. And back in the day when Venus and Pluto came together at zero Aquarius, the one degree Aquarius mark is about uh, durability. The word is a do an old Adobe mission. It's considered in this book, I love to use, hmm, and you're probably asking what it is, the Sabian symbols by Diana E. Roche. It's about doing things in a durable way. And so it's about sustainability, endurance, stability, anchorage, spiritual integrity, service, and hope. So we all kind of tried to reset in that way in our love lives, in our, in our general life, et cetera. This particular Sabian symbol, because the conjunction is at six degrees and 57 minutes of Aquarius rounds up to seven degrees in the Sabian land. And the seven degree symbol is, drum roll please, as she gets her book out, a child, oh, Aquarius seven, oh, a child born of an eggshell. Isn't that funny? A child born of an eggshell? It reminds me of Venus coming out of the shell, right? The clam shell. Keyword, essentiality. Creative self-renewal. Oh my gosh, I love that. Creative self-renewal. Mars, ambition, drive, personal willpower, passion. Venus, love, beauty, kindness, friendliness, and creativity are the arts. I love creative self-renewal as a key word. word. Um, this symbol speaks to new beginnings. An image of a child born of an eggshell symbolizes rebirth or the process of creating something anew. I think I'm going to call this the re a rebirth energy. Venus, uh, re you know, rebirth and creativity or something. Um, 
self-realization is a, a part of it. Um, wow. Self-realization, enlightenment, and regeneration. Not too bad. Ingenuity, creativity, unlimited resources, keywords, creation, rebirth, new beginnings, potential, self-realization, self-renewal, resourcefulness, individualism, infinite regression or progression. All right. We're going with it. We're going to show you the sky and we're going to do your sign. Let's get rolling. Now, in my Pluto video that I put out recently in Aquarius, I did predict that King Charles would step away for and probably for illness because um, of an eclipse energy, but also because of Pluto and Aquarius coming into a square to King Charles' moon, which represents his body. So, because uh, he has a moon in Taurus. So, um, I also had other videos about that uh, possibility. And this moon that we're having right now coming up in Aquarius is connected to Icarus, which is a leader falling from power. Amongst others, King Charles stepping down and passing the torch to his um, son is very likely this year, but that was embedded in his inauguration. And almost every astrologer saw that with an eclipse on the inauguration that he would not maintain his position in power for very long. If you like predictive content about world events, which is called mundane astrology, well, stick with me because I do love that stuff as well. Here is the sky just set for a Scorpio rising. It's irrelevant, but you can see right here what you've got going is Venus and Pluto and Pluto, one degrees of Aquarius at the time, Mars and Venus at 60 grab, six degrees and 58 minutes. It's 57, 58 are tracking each other to the minute around February 22nd at 1156 PM in Eastern Standard Pacific time into after the midnight, tumbling us in to the wee hours of you know 3 p.m., 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and sometime, you know, in the early you know, coffee hour, morning for, uh, hours for the people in England or, you know, GMT. So it doesn't necessarily matter the exact time, 21, 22 of February, that this is occurring depending on your time zone, as much as to say this is a rare event because of P Pluto's co-presence. I call this the Pluto party, part of the sky. Until about the 19th, we also have the sun there. I'll be doing a whole video on what happens between the 16th and the 19th, where we have what I call the Pluto party intensity going on in our sky as Venus joins the fray and five planets wait our Aquarius real estate in our whole synatal chart. Here we have the energy in Aquarius. And if you think about world leaders and events, okay, I want you to think about this. Uh, Iran is Leo rising in the house of open enemies. We have a Mars, Pluto, Venus combination, and that is very intense energy, but it can be a push pull, you know, regarding uh, war versus peace. Look for some intensity around the 22nd and 21st around the role of Iran in the current uh, Middle East conflict. This is a uh, Mars, Venus, uh, Pluto square to King Charles and Joe Biden's moon. Both of those have to do with health. And so especially Joe Biden's moon in the house of sickness. I do not expect Joe Biden to make it to the presidency for health reasons. Somebody else will be running my humble opinion as well. You can also see that with um, the nation of Israel being uh, having their homeland Part of the chart in Capricorn, this is not looking at that. So nothing to do with them is happening to do with the home and homeland of the nation of Israel. But over here, the um, part of the sky that is where the Aries warrior is and the north node of fate, Venus will come into a sextile and this represents the house of open enemies for the um, for the nation of Israel. Let's just put that into the mix. I don't know why it's not there. The north node got accidentally moved out. Now, the eclipses with the South Node have been the, one of the reasons that we are seeing war in the Middle East. The eclipses have been generating on the South Node of Israel since the October eclipse on the Ascendant, the difficulty with its Arab neighbors. And that is something that we will continue to see, unfortunately, until this eclipse cycle ends in January of 2025. But Israel, South Node eclipse cycle over its uh, Ascendant, open enemies in their mind, the people they're fighting against. North node Chiron, there's this existential wound, let's just call it like post-traumatic stress syndrome from the Holocaust, for one thing. And this energy is being, there's a flow from Venus, the goddess of peace, to North node Chiron during her transit through this part of our sky, which can bode well for some 
finalization or temporary ceasefires or peace. Now, as soon as she gets into this part of the sky, which as I mentioned is February the 16th, she's available to flow in a whole sign sextile to both the nation of Israel's ascendant and its house of open enemies. And this can look like war and peace brokers, especially with Mercury here. If we're going to see the likelihood of anything looking good, it's going to be in terms of a ceasefire or sustainable peace solution. It's going to be between February the 16th and we want Mercury to stay here. So let's go ahead by a day and see when Mercury leaves because we need him to negotiate the deal. And Mercury leaves this part of the sky on the 23rd. Between the 16th of February and the 23rd of February, I would predict that we are going to see a binding or uh, significant truce or ceasefire arrangement for the situation in Gaza, which is experiencing a humanitarian crisis. What is Venus? A humanitarian placement, which is moving through Aquarius. As a humanitarian push from world leaders in general, with the sun still in Aquarius, to get some humanitarian assistance and a stop to the bombing, we are going to probably see February 16th, to the March 23rd, a resolution solution that will be workable. Will it last? No. In October, there's a terrible intensity involving the Middle East and the sky. And I would predict even if there is some kind of temporary solution, it is certainly not going to last. Now, as we look at this sky, I would also point out a couple of other things. Venus is having a lovely jaunt through here, but she is connecting not only to, in a positive way, to the chironic wound of February 19th, wait for that healing and helping mop up after the conjunction of the node of fate, mean true node of fate with Chiron on February 19th. Please watch my Chiron video on that. But also she's in a square to Jupiter. That square is getting pretty intense just after the conjunction with Mars on February the 22nd, 21st, and then you can see she squares off with Jupiter. That can be about excess of some sort, right? Something going to extreme, whether it's love or money overdoing it. Um, we'll do a whole video on that in my weekly uh, forecast uh, for that week of February 24th. She also, as she continually trundles through here, is trying to reach the Vestal Flame of Devotion. And I always love that because Venus is a priestess as well. As she's a goddess of love, but she has an archetypal, you know, feminine, right? And we move her towards that a connection to the Vestal Flame on March the 6th. We'll be doing a separate video on that, but you can expect that to light up some area of tender devotion in your life where you're really looking to support some greater healing and some greater sense of perseverance satisfaction from a place of sacred duty instead of drudgery. We'll talk about that later. Finally, I am going to focus today not on the conjunction of Mars and Venus because that story is something that requires its own video. It's too intense, too important to not do that. Rather, what we're going to focus on is how you're going to have a chironic healing of some intense chironic wound that's been active since 2019 in essence in your Aries house. And when this thing can flare maybe around the 19th of February, when there's a conjunction in this part of our sky, not seen this way uh, since 19, in this particular way, since, well, there's different dates, but go watch my Chiron video. Venus is going to come by and mop. Up. It was like 1969, 19, 1969, 1987. Did I get that right? My brain is offline. 69, 79, 89. I'll double check the dates before we get going for the all signs. But anyway, the Mars Chiron conjunction definitely happened in 1969. That was the big uh, uh, Woodstock, uh, Haight Ashbury protest against the Vietnam War. Venus is the goddess of peace. So in the world, as we see, or flow to Chiron in the sign of war, who's a mentor of the noble soldiers, it may very well be that her connection to the nodes of fate is going to be a definitive moment for peace in this current conflagration in the Middle East and in our own lives as well. So kind of building it in around February 29th, uh, 28th, 27th, 27th to 29th of the month, 
some kind of deeper healing going on from what was triggered as a wounded space in your life, in my life, and in the world around the 19th of February with this rare conjunction. Let's go ahead and let's do all signs. And don't forget, if you're new to my channel, hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And don't forget to check out Malena's beautiful Venusian jewelry. Now the light is a little bit better because I finally got the, the blinds off of me, right? Uh, handmade, custom, one of a kind. I have a couple of pairs of her jewelry. And I honestly love her work. That's like copper, like a copper dangles and copper is of the nature of Venus. This is emerald green and that's the nature of Venus. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do your sign. And don't forget, um, we're talking about general signs, bell curves, not a personal reading. Everything an astrologer says is not going to come true <laughs> because this is not personal. This is general bell curve astrology. All righty. And uh, my Sky Reader class is starting up in April, probably around the 7th. It lasts six weeks. Do you want to be your own astrologer and time your best life? Then please check out that link below to get on the early bird notice discount and wait list. I usually fill up just from the early, early bird wait list and it never gets a chance to go out as the general public would get it because I can't take too many students in order to follow through with what you're doing and be able to answer all of your questions. Um, okay, so just check out the Sky Reader class. It's its fifth time I'll be teaching it. Uh, people have raved about how enjoyable and fun it is, but you're also going to learn astrology. And we have a Facebook group where you can connect with other students and my assistant will check your homework and I will as well. So it's interactive. It's not just like you're doing this on your own. We have a Q&A every week as well as the class. So it's very involved. I'm very hands-on with you guys if you want to learn a bit of astrology to be your own astrologer and time your best life. <laughs> My good old mantra. Let's go ahead and do all signs. And yes, it was 1969 that Chiron and the North Node came together in the sign of Aries. And it was the whole Haight-Ashbury and the inauguration of President Nixon that year and the Concorde jet booming away. A whole bunch of cool things happened. We landed a man on the moon. So that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and do your sign. Let's open up the chart. Let's move into you. This is not a long video, but it is an information rich one, I do hope. Today's focus is on Venus sextile and Chiron North Node, bringing a, the, the, it's March the 5th for the mean node. It's March the 19th for the true node conjunction, but understand how rare this is in your life. You might've been a child in 1969. You might have had a Chironic wound healing in your Aries real estate. Let's go ahead and start with Aries, of course, because Aries is the first sign of this zodiac in the Western tropical system. And of course, I need to edit the chart to get us to that spot. Wait, let's do Aries whole sign. Oh, we're, we're ready to go. Good, goodness gracious, I can just tip it back by an hour. Let's roll with Aries. And when you hit my like button, if you want to, <laughs> please, it does do an amazing algorithmic thing on YouTube. They just think that if you hit the like button, I'm popular. And if I'm popular, they share me with more new people that haven't seen my channel. And because this channel is my main livelihood, and this is how I am growing my, my business as well, that really does support me just by clicking that like button. If anything I say today uh, engenders a sense of satisfaction. I do have a regular crew of people who watch my channel. Um, and that's because I do live premieres for every single video that I put out and I'm in the room talking with you. And some of my regulars are Psychic Readings with Rose and Vancouver, Vixen, Crystalline, Alchemist, Linda Calder, Grounded Extracts, Herbal Empress, Flower Remedy, Serge LaBelle, Stephen the Stupid Jupiterian, Jupiter 8, uh, L.A. Taylor, and M.M. Balkan 200, K.M.R. So cool, you guys. Astrocosmology. I think I said that right. Astro. No, anyway, Melissa Carey and Fran Osher and um, more. Thank you for being a part of my crew. Let's roll. Let's do Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. I am one of you because I have a Sun and Moon here. What we are have happening is a chironic wound in the house of our identity, especially the ascendant Aries folk. Have you felt like you don't know who you are? You're having an existential crisis when Chiron first tiptoed in here February of 2019 full time, but he dip, did dip into this part of your chart in the spring of 2018. So spring of 18 slash then full time February of 19. And since then, existential crisis. Who am I? What am I? Am I physically wounded? Are there problems with my body? Have I been trying to heal myself, mind, body, spirit? What has been wrong? Why don't I feel like I belong to my life, to myself? Where am I deeply wounded in my identity? This is a story for many Aries. 
since then, since 2018, 19, it impacts us all differently. Sun, it's a career wound. Moon, it's a home and homeland wound. And your ascendant, it's all about you. Now, I've been experiencing a home wound with my moon and to some extent a career wound. But on the other hand, Chiron is the key to purpose and you're trying to bring purpose to home, purpose to career and purpose to your identity. The key to your purpose is through the gifts you have through the Chironic wound. And this energy is giving, being given a love up by Venus. I love her. Now, Venus is moving through your 11th house of good spirit, and she does this on the yearly, first time with Pluto. You're kind of like done with those friends that don't work for you. You're willing to let them go. It's like a deep rebirthing, a regeneration of the friendship circles. You're kind of like done, done, done. If it's having to end, you'll let it go, your social networks as well. But you're also aiming for high gains in your career. The wealth yoga is here, and the gains of your career especially financially, you are going to increase every single year for 20 years as Venus and Pluto keep meeting here. So you're on an escalation for greater wealth. You know, you're going to look for friends that are deep, intimate, and 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 can look at the darker side of life. You're not going to go with superficial friends anymore. You're looking for friends who are here to face death and rebirth storylines and face them together in a spirit of harmony and goodwill. We will talk a bit about that Mars conjunction, but I'll give you a hint. Singletons, you could find a new love life story from somebody in a friendship circle that becomes suddenly more than a friend with benefit, but a passionate romance. But we'll talk about that later. Um, technically speaking, Venus will soothe the narrative between the 27th and 29th of February, whatever kerfuffle uh, collected around the chironic wound inflammation, a North Node Chiron, Chiron around the 19th of February, give or take a few days, and she will bring peace and ease to you from the house of good spirit. It could look like even some financial windfall. It could look like peace and ease, ease through a friend who really you can lean on or peace and ease through some increase in your financial well-being through your career that helps improve your existential wound, existential wound, also some financial goodness from an elder sibling or some finance or some emotional support from an elder sibling can really play into the last three days of February. Anything else I want to say? And lastly, you know, Venus does rule your house of income. She will square Jupiter and Uranus during her transit. But let me just say this. I'll do separate weekly videos on that. You can have some unexpected, surprising financial abundance as she moves through February 16th to March 11th, your 11th house. Kaboom. How surprising. How much excitement is there? Is there there? Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. Venus is trundling from February 16th to March 11th through your house of career. This is excellent for a couple of things. I mean, certainly Pluto Mars can have you quit a job or someone in your workspace quit that benefits you, but also raises promotions, ease, harmony, and good luck in your career during this transit. With Pluto here for the first time in your life, it's going to be something to do with how much power and wealth you can command in career and workspaces and really leveling up a kind of a soft glow filter to your reputation space. It's definitely good for asking for raises between February 16th and March 11th, or what you truly desire in the world of your work. As you know, Venus moves through here, she does come into that flow to North Node Chiron in the last three days of February, kind of mopping up after an intensity around the Chironic wound that will be activated on February the 19th. And that Chironic wound is something you've been dealing with since 2018-19 in your spiritual life, in your desire for aloneness. Maybe you felt lonely since then. Maybe you've also been dealing with addictions or self-undoing and sabotaging patterns. That's about to turn around. Look for some deeper, refined healing that brings goodness to you, but ironically, through the work life, through the workspace. Now, honestly, cosmic lovers up here, we'll do a whole video on that, can mean falling in love with somebody in the workspace or getting involved in a sexy romance in your workspace. Because she's continually in a square to Jupiter and Uranus throughout this February 16th to March 11th energy, uh, some unexpected surprises to do with work, but you feel lucky and you're happy with these surprises because Jupiter Uranus is bringing it for you and you are lucky right now. So you won't be too troubled by these work surprises. And if something comes to an end, then right away, something better and new in work will emerge that makes you very happy. A Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. What is it like to have 
uh, Pluto Venus for the first time in your life, moving through your ninth house of good spirit. I mean, ninth house of God. Well, you know, it's a spiritual house. It's where you find your spiritual philosophy, your ideology, what is deeply meaningful for your life, your dharmic path. That's the deeper energies of the ninth, although it can involve father, father figures, by the way. But nonetheless, it has that vibe, that spiritual between the world's metacosmos house vibe. So it can open up some kind of deep spiritual awakening or revelation uh, with a Venus Pluto combination in the month of February 16th to March the 11th, that time frame, it, it also can open up a really beautiful opportunity to, to plan or in, take a trip to a foreign place or to engage in romantic love for from with or from a foreigner. It's also the house of third marriages. And if you're in a third marriage environment, long term committed, monogamous, cohabitating love, this is going to bring some beautiful energy to that part of your sky February 16th to March the 11th. Certainly with Mars up there, things can be pretty damn sexy in the bedroom. And with Pluto, it goes deep, it goes tantric, it goes the power of love, it goes very, very deep. As a Gemini, uh, you also might find this is going to give you some opportunities to succeed academically, or even be accepted into your dream school, February 16th to March the 11th. You may also find that this is going to open up an opportunity if you are one of the people involved in publications, especially book publishing, that glows you up here, your agent, your publisher, getting a deal, who knows, getting a successful publication outcome February 16th to March the 11th. Because Pluto Venus is a wealth yoga, also you can be wealthy through Ninth House Matters, foreigners, foreign lands, travel, publications, books, academics, and more. With this healing of the chironic wound you've been dealing with since 2018-19 in the house of friendships, friendship circles, and great gains from your career, this is being smoothed over. You hit like a rough patch maybe around the 19th where you kind of really are feeling this inflammation of, or salt in the wound. But then I feel like with Venus following through in the last three days of February, smooths it out. Bring something good to do with that wound to do with your larger social groups. I'm a progressed Gemini sun. I've lost two really close friends to death in the last couple, last four years as Chiron has moved through my house of friends and wounded me there. So there's maybe a new friendship emerging or a deeper connection to another woman for some people or man. Venus can rule feminine friendships, sisterhoods and stuff coming through. If you had a wound as a Gemini around an elder sibling wound, that can also be soothed and healed in the last three days of February. And the square to Jupiter Uranus can bring unexpected bounty from foreign countries and foreign lands, unexpected financial bounty for income from borderless income. Thus, we have, you know, a PayPal Stripe and international revenue generation, unexpected, exciting developments, even though it's a square and sometimes there's excess or indulgence, Venus, Uranus, Jupiter to me feels like a bolt or jolt of exciting positivity in income generated from far off places. And again, it's also two foreign land houses. So exciting opportunities. You didn't expect to travel to foreign countries. Yes. Yes. Coming through the sky between February, February 16th and March the 11th. All right, Cancer Sun, Moon and Rising sign. What we have going on in the sky is we have the movement here of uh, Venus in the uh, Aquarius part of your house, sky, which is between the 16th of February and March the 11th. You haven't seen her here with Pluto though in this lifetime. So here's a new vibe that's going to last until 2044. How are you going to wealth up? This for a lot of Cancer Risings has to do with inheritances, real estate property, investments, 401k, um, passive income, royalty income. This is going to play, be a deeper place of generating wealth for you over the next couple of decades. This is your first vibe of it. Now, when Venus is moving through here, Mars is there as well. So so you're going to cut, pair, end, and sever. But unfortunately, that can look like money coming through the spouse, through marital uh, division of assets and separation of resources as well. So some of you cancers may be looking squarely at this question and answer. Is that something you're looking at, you know, in a separation from a significant marriage partner? Pluto still tipping into your marriage house in September, October, November. If there's a marriage that's not working for you, it may be coming to a close. This could be the inaugural energy of how you want to separate those assets. You will do well anytime Venus is here though, because she will protect you. So you see that energy going on of separating and uniting and oppositions, love and hate in a shared resource house. Again, February 16th to March 11th, just could be fighting with your spouse about shared monies. If you have any kind of investments in the markets, this could bring you some profit during February 16th to March the 11th. 
Now, there's also the sense here with Pluto of intimacy and sexuality. Venus and Mars are secret lovers in a secret house. Um, I want to sing a song. <laughs> there's almost a song for that, isn't there? So secret sexy love stories that are forbidden, forbidden love stories can be going on here. But secrets to do with forbidden love can also emerge, especially in marital situations between February 16th and March 11th. Venus wants to air the dirty laundry to bring harmony and peace. And Mars is quite willing to go to battle to bring the dirty laundry out. So if you are in a relationship as a Cancer rising, expect some revelations here, perhaps that maybe shock you, but also help you heal. The shock comes from the Uranus element, uh, squaring Venus. Now, also, there's this healing of a wound around your purpose and your career and reputation that has been playing out since 2018-19 with the beginning of the Chiron transit through the 10th house. Some of you Cancers are looking for your true purpose, the best use of your unique gifts and skills. You might inflame the wound a bit or it might be inflamed around the 19th of February when there's that conjunction of the North Node and Chiron last seen in 1969. And then all of a sudden, or later, 27th of February to the 29th, Venus tries to heal and seal and fix the wound. She puts on a super band-aid glue that can sew up the damage. So look for those two stories to connect. And it, a lot of it has to do with money and resources that you may have in passive income or shared income or business monies, partner monies, as well as marital monies. Then you can also note that you can see that there's a square to Jupiter Uranus from the house of windfalls and, and pennies from heaven. That can also look like money coming through an elder sibling, some windfalls from unexpected sources, or somebody coming through the sky with an intensity that requires action and decisions in this February 16th to March the 11th, surprising you with opportunities financially that come from um, benefactors and allies, people who wish to help you, right, to, to be your ally. Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign in the sky. This is a first in a lifetime Venus-Pluto combination in your seventh house of good spirit. How does it feel to have Venus-Pluto here? Well, if you're in a major love relationship with Mars here, it's intense. Forbidden, toxic, fatal attractions are being uh, revealed and cut and severed, as well as Venus is trying to smooth it out. But honestly, this energy is going to look like February 16th and March 11th. If you're in a relationship, Leos, it isn't the one for you. This can be blessed endings. If you're single and you meet somebody under this combination of Venus, Pluto, Mars, <laughs> it's going to always be very intense. It's going to be a relationship that doesn't let you skim the surface, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, this energy here, Venus can make you more popular with your marketplace clients, customers, and audience. She can give you a glow up and you might attract very powerful and demanding and intense females into your world in some way during the 16th of February to March the 11th. At the very same time, Venus is going to help you heal a chironic wound that may get inflamed around February the 19th. As it gets intensified, this chironic wound has been active in the house of spiritual faith, father, father figures, academics, environments, uh, colleges and campuses, and the book publishing world. This energy has been very intense for you since 2018-19. A lot of you may have experienced it as not finding any meaning to your life. And so this wound may intensify on the 19th of February, give or take a few days, and then Venus will come in afterward to smooth it out. Now, you could have an intense wound around a foreign person, foreign land, or foreign shore situation as well that gets healed and smoothed out on the last three days of February. In her broad square to Uranus and Jupiter, you might expect some unexpected surprising legal agreements and contracts, deals and negotiations around work, including unexpected new work opportunities that surprise and delight you, but are also very intense and demanding of your intent, intent attention during this month, particularly and sometime around uh, the, well, it's waning here, sometime around, um, the 22nd to the 27th of February, and later on as well, just to say the whole month of February 16th to March 11th, unexpected and surprising developments in work that are rather positive. 
Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. So Venus is sitting in for the first time in your life, uh, your sixth house of work and health with Pluto. Now, Pluto won't suffer fools gladly here. If you are working with bosses you don't like or people in your colleague coworker space that aren't right for you, that's going to be basically a situation of them leaving or you leaving. Somebody can quit with Mars Venus here in order to find more joy and harmony in your and peace in your workspace. However, this is also a house of pets and and this is also a house of, of, you know, Pluto being here with Mars, Venus. The loss of a beloved pet can happen for you. Uh, February 16th and March 11th. Yes, life happens. Yeah, I can talk about the possibility of a beloved animal passing because that's called life. Don't like real life. Don't watch my channel. But also, this is power. And Pluto can give you authentic power in the work and career space here especially a sense of wanting to devote yourself to something sacred that you really care about as Venus will move later on into a flame, devotional flame energy regarding work and, and work situations. I want to say though, you could also find an ability to have some success in paying off debt that money you owe or you know, some sort of debt situation, as well as an unexpected and very powerfully yay positive energy around a new rental opportunity if you're into uh, like looking for a rental home or as a landlord finding a tenant. With Venus here and Pluto, your health will improve, but it's demanding you cut, end, and sever addiction, self-undoing, and bad things that you shouldn't be, be engaging in, particularly south node in the second house. What are you putting in your mouth? Is it a vape? Is it, is it weed? Is it wine? Is it gluten? What should you not be ingesting? And Venus will help you cut that out because Mars is helping you do the cutting to improve your health, February 16th to March the 11th. With a square to Jupiter, unexpected positive surprises to do with academics, foreign land travel opportunities, work and health matters coming through the sky, during her transit through your sixth house. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. What happens with Venus for the first time in your life? February 16th and March 11th, traveling through your house of sexuality and romance. It's going to get deep. You know, if there's something going on with Pluto there and Venus and Mars that you have not addressed. For some of you Libras, it can be understanding yourself more. And when it comes to romance and sex, and you might realize that I'm not kidding you, you're, you're barking up the wrong gender tree. Like maybe you really love women and you think you love men or vice versa. Or you could come to terms with some kind of forbidden sexual shame, abandonment, secrets, betrayal, secrets, things you haven't dealt up uh, that, are, are, that are festering, maybe even from your childhood. And with Venus, Mars here, if you're single, you can meet a very intense, powerful attraction sexually. Watch for it to be so intense it might be too hot to handle but that's very possible because pluto venus mars is like holy sex you know what kind of thing am i getting myself involved in certainly watch for fatal attractions and sex scandals in your own life if you are in a relationship already secrets to do with your sexuality a long, deeper dive into more intimacy with the one you're with is being called forth and mercury will be here as well for quite a bit of time until about i think the end of February, which means deep conversations about romance and sexual issues with somebody or stories with somebody you're already with. If you're an entrepreneur, this can boost your entrepreneurial business. If you're a creative, this can make your creative life extremely fertile. If you have children, this can be some intensity and some in intense discussions with one of your children, February 16th to March the 11th. And we see that Venus is going to try to heal a chironic wound that's going to be inflamed around the 11th, 19th of February, give or take a few days, because this is where you have been feeling a wound ever since 2018 19 in your ability to secure happy and good business partnerships, reach an audience or marketplace or clients that are your people or even connect in some way to your main squeeze. You may, you're wounded in the house of primary love and long-term commitment. This wound will be healing and maybe through exacerbation of it on the 19th of February. And Venus is trying to help you in the last three days of February, bring pure and beautiful, harmonious and peaceful closure to that wound. And she squares Jupiter Uranus in your eighth house of secrets and chunky money. I expect some unexpected here when it comes to romance and sexual secrets and revelations, but also you could be healing something to do with stories you have around your money. Five and eight are both in some ways money houses, money luck and money this chunky as I call it and inheritance oriented as well. 
you know, how you receive the esteem of others is part of the eighth house. And uh, there is a beautiful energy of uh, being able to be more esteemed coming through the 16th to the March 11th. So your finances can improve, but in unexpected and sudden ways, perhaps here. Okay. And look forward to that. Hi, Scorpios. Here we go. Venus is moving February 16th to March the 11th through your house of home. This is you in your home. This is your private life, your domestic life. It's the place that you reside. It's your domicile. It's where you're living. And it's also your childhood. Now, I mean, Pluto here can dredge up childhood stuff that you haven't dealt with, right? Venus is about your self-worth, self-love, your desires, what you want. Mars is cutting there and cutting ties maybe with the ancestral familial childhood stories that have held you back. This is very intense energy, 15th, uh, 16th of February to March the 11th. However... You know, this could be starting a new romance close to home with the cosmic lovers here. And with Pluto here, definitely expect some excavation of things that you weren't seeing about your own childhood that now become more evident to you. Um, maybe forbidden and hidden secret, secret sexual stories coming off your family of origin or things out of your childhood. This looks very much like that kind of stuff. Um, Pluto, Venus, wealth yoga, legacy house from the family of origin, um, possibly February 16th to March the 11th, and inheritance notice is coming your way. It can happen, especially when the sun is here, which is an inheritance from a father, father figure. Or a gift. And, you know, Venus and Pluto for 20 years will be trying to wealth you up through property, home, land, and real estate matters. So a lot of you may begin investing in real estate or property over the next couple of decades. And she's flaming into the devotional flame, tender sacred flame regarding your... Um, regarding your monies that are not directly earned and, you know, investments and stuff is something she's going to point you towards February 16th to March the 11th. As she's moving through here, though, she heals a chironic wound in the house of work and health. Some of you may have been beleaguered by some challenges to your health, especially regarding your head and some headaches, headaches, you know, facial headache things, things to do with the head. Mar it's the rams of Aries here, the horns. But also you may have been dealing with a wound about work. You might like, I'm not in my right livelihood since 2018, 19. This is not my right path in my work. In my, I'm doing servitude instead of service. I'm doing drudgery instead of destiny. And so duty, drudgery versus destiny. So this call to find true path of service or feeling indebted to others physically, financially or in some other way, this is being healed with Venus on the last three days of February flowing to the chironic wound that inflames around February 19th. And finally, look to somebody in your significant other space, Jupiter Uranus, to have some unexpected surprises like your, your main squeeze or your business partner, or you having some unexpected surprises with your clients, audience, and marketplace that delight you and bring a greater sense of well-being perhaps. But it also could be literally like Venus in the fourth, Jupiter Uranus in the seventh, this whole window of time, February 16th to March 11th, an unexpected opportunity to have a contract to sell a property or to buy a property or to travel broadly far away from your property with your main partner. All right. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. As you see, you're going to experience a first in a lifetime Venus transit through the sign of Aquarius, co-present with Pluto, uh, February 16th to March the 11th. This is a place of travel, of writing, of your online and social media world, of your fishbowl in which you swim, of your daily life, of a younger sibling and just siblings siblings in general. Major transformation around those uh, siblings, maybe cousins and aunts and uncles, but the extended family. And this is going to transform something very much about your daily world. But Venus brings pleasure and joy and enjoyment, and Mars brings passion and will and excitement. And you may find yourself falling into a new relationship through an online dating app or meeting somebody in a local pub. If that happens, it should be quite sweet. On the other hand, the intensity here with Pluto is going to be important to know. This would not be a superficial new relationship. If you're with somebody already, it can bring up an opportunity for a romantic getaway that has intensity baked into it. As well, Sagittarius, 
you may have some incredibly important developments with a younger sibling emerge during this window of time, February 16th to March 11th, trying to bring peace and harmony where there has been conflict and separation, siblings in general, younger specifically. And finally, this looks very much like you could be looking at some kind of project, communication, writing project that you're trying to get a passionate uplift in with intense and powerful wealth that you like to generate from it over the long story. Because Venus is healing a wound during her transit through Aquarius to the Chironic wound last started in 2018-19 in the fifth house of children. You may have an estrangement or a wound with a child if you're a parent and that's trying to heal the 27th to 29th of February. Or you may have a wound in your sexual and romantic life that is trying to heal. Now you've been troubled here, right, ever since 2019. And this is trying to we bring a closure with the Venus flow and the Pluto power to that part of your world on the last three days of February. Look for the inflammation of that wound around February 19th. Venus is squaring Jupiter Uranus in the house of work and health, an unexpected work opportunity that's delightful, surprising, and positive, a shock and shock and awe energy around a matter to do with a pet or a health matter. But because it's Venus and she's still a benefic, I think she's trying to bring it as a good thing. And so you might encounter a positive, unexpected development. February 16th and March 11th is a general overview regarding work and health matters, pet matters, and rental matters. Um, sometimes with a square, it can be a little bit like a crisis, but it has a silver lining. Hey, Capricorn, first in a lifetime, transit of Venus with co-present with Pluto through your second house of money and earnings. This is definitely a story to do with wealth. Pluto and Venus is a wealth you'll get and in the next 20 years. Earnings and wealth are connected. You're starting to get money wealth and powerful money wealth over the next two decades if you use this transit of Pluto Venus correctly. So February 16th and March the 11th, expect some kind of glow up in your finances, but Mars is entrepreneurial and self-starter here, maybe through self-starter. Mars also cuts, ends, and severs, and you may end and quit a job or a power of work, especially with South Node in your 10th house, so that you can find something new and better in and from your home. And by the way, when Venus transits through the second house, she likes to enjoy her physical pleasures and her facial beauty. Mars is surgery, dermabrasion, and lasers. And some of you Capricorns are doing something maybe to your face involving cosmetic procedures or dental work and veneers or whitening your teeth. I don't know. And that's a good time to do it, I'd say. But Pluto is about deep transformation of your values and your sense of self-worth. And maybe your values are being reassessed and deeply transformed, and you're cutting away what values no longer serve you to choose the ones that are potent, powerful, and true. What do you want? What do you desire? What do you value? Your food style can change. Mars is cutting out the bad things and Venus is giving you pleasure with the new good things and Pluto is transforming everything because of a new food style, February 16th to March the 11th. Because there is a healing of a chironic wound that's been beleaguering you since 2018 and 19 in your fourth house. This is your, uh, you don't have a home. You feel homeless. You don't know where you're supposed to live. Where's my true home? I don't feel at home in my home. My domicile, where I reside, my childhood wounds are being healed. 2018, 19, especially the mother wound. And we have Venus soothing a chironic inflammation wound on February 19th, give or take a few days, and Venus mopping up to soothe and heal and complete the healing on the last three days of February as she flows to the North Node Chironic Conjunction. That wound can be healed through speech, through conversations, second house, or the last three days of February through a financial uplift that allows you to restore a sense of wellness regarding the childhood wounds or the wound of home. Now, as well, there is a square from Venus ongoing to Jupiter and Uranus on the 16th of March 11th of February to March 11th. That broad energy says surprises that are positive, but may be critical and crisis oriented regarding romantic love, regarding your children, regarding fertility and pregnancy, regarding entrepreneurial and creative projects. This square energy from Venus will ultimately have a silver lining and bring something good financially from Fifth House Matters. And maybe it's not even about you. It could be about one of your children, Venus square Jupiter in the house of children. And you could find out that one of your children is pregnant and you're about to be a grandparent. <laughs> and that's a positive surprise, February 16th to March the 11th. Alrighty, 
Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. I am one of you. We have this energy of Venus in the house of us. It is very, very rare, very important because Pluto is here. And so it's first in a lifetime. We're trying to power up to be more in touch with our values and desires, as well as go under the surface of what we think our identity is in a way that's more true. Now, certainly when Venus is here, we're more popular, a publicly appealing, charismatic and charming, but we're carrying that charm with a deep, authentic power. We're not carrying it on a surface level. And with Mars here, we may be coming into a time in which we're trying to resolve the polarity between our masculine feminine, what we love and what we hate, what we want to get rid of and what we want to keep. So there's a lot of inner work going on for every one of us Aquarians, February 16th to March the 11th, as we redefine our identity in earnest. We also may be looking at the sky through the lens of how we want to blend both the need to separate something from our lives or someone and what we truly need to keep. It reminds me of that Marie Kondo, does it bring you joy? We'll ask that, does that person bring me joy? Does that thing bring me joy? Does that situation bring me joy? I bet a lot of us Aquarians, February 16th and March 11th, will purge our closets as well as our psyches and let go of that which no longer is necessary and keep that which we truly love in people, possessions, belongings, work, everything. Now, energetically, of course, we get this every every year for 20 years. So it's going to be a new way we operate. Then we see the chironic wound in the third house of trips and travel and journeys, siblings, especially younger, things to do with our local neighborhood, our writing and writing projects and our online world being healed. This chironic wound has been flaring since 2018. Venus is going to mop up the healing of something here that is going to intensify maybe around the February 19th window of time and maybe March the 5th, the mean node. And she's going to try to soothe it out in the last three days of February. So a chironic wound around a travel thing, a tra chironic tra a wound around a sibling, a chironic wound around a writing project, a chironic wound in terms of meaning, the meaning of life <laughs> when it comes to our online social media world. Because I mean, I can speak to a few of these myself, especially the travel wound during the pandemic, because I did not take that medical procedure that turned out to not be useful and maybe harmful. And I couldn't travel anywhere in my country because of our our Gestapo-like government. So the other thing is, is that deeper into the third house is something to do with what you wish to communicate or what ideas you have. And if you've been feeling there's some wounding there, that's going to be resolved. I mean, you can make a joke about it too. You know, I haven't written a damn thing on my blog of any meaning since 2018, 19. And like, I'm, I'm saying, well, let's see if Venus can pull off the last three days of February. And suddenly I'm in a writing mood and I get something done. Um, Now, the neighborhood and the neighbors, you know, do you feel in touch with your neighbors and neighborhood? Have you felt like you don't belong to the local environment? Are you really out of touch with that? Well, that wound can heal as well. And if you're an Aquarius with a, your floating midheaven in the third house, that's really more importantly, also maybe about where you live, that you're trying to heal that. Uh, we have that square to Jupiter, Uranus, unexpected, surprising, but positive developments to do with land, property, home, and real estate. And, you, you know, I don't know what it will be. We'll see. I, I'll report back. I hope you'll report back to me in the con comments. This is active all February 16th to March 11th with a bit more intensity perhaps coming through the sky, I guess, the 22nd to the 27th and the first week of March. And this energy is positive because Venus is involved, but we also see intensity and maybe crisis conflict that engenders a, a sense of resolution, like a silver lining. But if something unexpected to do with home property, land, and real estate, whether you own or rent comes through your sky, expect a positive outcome, even though you may be somewhat surprised. And first and always first, best and always best, the mystics of the poets of the zodiac, Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. Well, here we have Venus moving through your first in a lifetime political presence, of your 12th house of enlightenment, the full Monty, Buddhahood. Um, Venus is peace, beauty, and harmony. Pluto is power. This 12th house is also to do with foreigners and foreign shores and money you can generate from those places and people. Revenues from far, far off shores. February 16th to March the 11th, you may get in touch with a powerful person from a foreign country, or they may get in touch with you, or you may generate more money on your borderless income of PayPal and Stripe. This energy is also connected to Mars. So therefore, if you're single, cosmic lovers are showing up from foreign places and foreign trips or secret bedroom pleasures that you're enjoying intensely along with the energy of Pluto going deep, going deep, going deep. 
Now, when I look at this, I also think, think of Venus moving through here and really opening up your uh, your dreams at night and your inner meditations and your reveries to reveal what was hidden from view, Pluto, so that you may have deeper spiritual awareness. If you've been feeling alone and lonely, Venus can heal that February 16th and March the 11th by bringing more a sense of well-being in solitude, or I might say solace in solitude or isolation. We'll be doing a whole video on that Mars conjunction to Venus, uh, which comes up February 22nd. But I would say for some of you, it intensifies your sexual and erotic life, February 16th to March the 11th. With this energy of a chironic wound in the earnings house since 2018-19 and self-worth and self-value or being wounded about your face or food styles that you've engendered and don't work for you, especially addictions, Venus and Mars and Chiron can heal that addiction pattern, self-undoing, self-sabotage, or a wound to your worth, self-worth, and earnings. This is being healed most directly as the wound in flames on February 19th. And then she kind of sweetens it up and says, let's heal it completely. I'm here to help on February 27th to the 29th as well. If she's doing that February 27th, 29th thing, she may be looking at giving you some kind of financial opportunity from foreign places. If you have to finally let go of an addiction or self-sabotaging strategy, look to the last three days of February for that to be relatively easy. But you would have been struggling with that thing that you ingest since, or smoke or drink since 2018-19. Finally, if you are looking for some kind of um, surprise but positive and a bounteous and abundant energy from the third house of siblings, trips and travel, online world writing projects. This is going to blow through the sky throughout the month of February, March. February 16th to March the 11th looks good on you for that kind of increase that you don't expect, that kind of unexpected positive surprise. But because it involves two travel houses, 12 and 3, it may look like an unexpected travel opportunity, but it has a very beautiful positive appeal like a golden glow, a silver lining, but there may be some surprise and intensity around it, Jupiter, Uranus bringing it on, or with a sibling, especially younger, surprise, or a surprise with siblings in general that's positive, and maybe even an opportunity um, to get involved in something with your local neighborhood or neighbors that you didn't know was going to come and you're quite delighted, or an unexpected surprising change of neighborhood involving travel. So look for those energies coming through your sky February 16th to March the 11th. And thank you for listening to my longer video on Venus than I thought it was going to be. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I got some really weird light here. And uh, thanks for being a part of my channel. Check out Melaine and Debbie's earrings. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? If you're into custom made uh, jewelry, uh, that is Goddess Co. Treasures, uh, beautiful shit <laughs> that you know no one else will be ever wearing, just you. Check it out in the description box. She's a friend of mine, so this is not something that I'm getting any compensation for. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy Venus, everybody. Big, big hugs.